Ian, we have a Patreon Q and A. You How go do you to access Patreon.com slash CU podcast. Man, it's, it's like clockwork now. You get some now. writing. You get some hangouts. You get all the access you, to the whole podcast. You get the podcast. full video podcast. Yeah. And remember, this is an audio podcast, and then we break it up for you fellows. For the algorithm, we break it up. I don't know. Or actually, you know, some people put the whole podcast on there. But we, we got to you know, keep, the, keep the lights on in Castle Country here. For this what do we got? There. All right. What in, do we got? In third place at 20%, do you think that Twitch streams are the future of presenting content? That was actually uh, Kate's suggestion, so I put it on there. Um, the movie, second place, the movie's hanging out. What, what would a CU podcast movie look like? 27%. And number one, runaway hit, 53%. Popular vote. What retro game console would you want an entire library of? No questions asked. Ian, take it away. This was your idea, I believe. Uh, sh- no questions asked. It would probably be PC Engine, but I would... Is that 700 games about? Uh, between CD and card, I think so, yeah. Um, it'd be real tempting to say yes to an entire Genesis collection. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just because I love the, I love the Sega Genesis, but I don't have the flash cart to play them all right now. I have the shitty flash cart. You, you don't have the, the I have like the, the one. I have, I, I have like the lower end of the Crix one. You don't have a newer one. Right. Um, but I don't collect a ton anymore. And I, I constantly see of all the systems that I see at, um, game shows and conventions. The only system that I'm really tempted to buy stuff for that I don't already, namely my PC Engine and my black and white Game Boy, is the Genesis. But I just don't want to go down that hole again. I Rabbit hole? Yeah, and I, I had it once, one time before, and had a large chunk of my Genesis collection stolen. And I think you told me that's a whole other story. Yeah, and then I just I, I haven't really gone back to it. But the thing is, is there are Genesis games that I like that I would like to own. Um, you know, honestly, doing the effort, actually collecting, finding the storage space seems miserable. So, yeah, if someone was like, yeah, you've got the whole collection and it's in a room there and it's not in anyone's way, that would be what I would take. Would you want to look through my collection before I sell off some of my Genesis stuff? I got some decent stuff. I don't want to buy it. I got no. Felios and I got Truxton right there. You stop. I maybe would take Truxton. Oh, okay. Now, now I'm tempted. I got some weird esoteric. I have Wardner. It's a weird ass one. Yeah, it you is. You don't find too often. And the funny thing about the Wardner one, the reason that comes to mind is that. I, I found it at, at, a, at a convention. You know, it's a very uncommon game. You don't find yeah. it. And I found it, and I'm like, this looks cool. I was check my list. I didn't have it. I came back later. It was gone. I came back home. I had it. It's one of those weird things that, like, I did have it. This yeah. happened to me before. This happened with the Hurricanes on the Super Nintendo. This is an aside. Where I was like, I, I think I had this for some reason. And it, it wasn't listed that I put it down. I owned Hurricanes. That went from like a ten dollar game to a hundred in like a year when people discovered like, oh, there's Super Nintendo games that are hard to find yeah. that aren't like the popular ones like Hagane. So it's PC. It was PC Engine, but then you, you really Genesis. Yeah, because honestly, I, I enjoy the collecting for the PC Engine. I enjoy the hunt Genesis. It'd be cool just to have all that stuff complete in front. So of So this me. is a weird question for me because I have three libraries of games that were my top choices: Nintendo, Trouble Graphics, and Master System, at least for the U.S. Uh, I could expand, though, and say, well, there's a lot of cool European Master System games and weird-ass ones in South America that would be nice to have. That sure to, is I mean, cool stuff. I mean, was there, like, another two, 200 at least that didn't come out here? 250? It's like, I think it's, like, 200. You know, I have, I have a couple, like, Operation Wolf, but I don't have, like, the Mortal Kombat's that came out. I don't have, like, the, you know, Sonic 2, and I don't have some of, like, Sonic Spinball, whatever the hell else came out. Street Fighter. Yeah, I don't have all this weird-ass, crappy Master System games. I would like uh, to play some of them. Uh, so I would say Master System might be an interesting one, just because. A lot, and a lot of these games are cheap, though. You just got to get them shipped. A lot in Europe, they're they're, they're dirt cheap. A lot of it because it was more common there. A right. Lot of these it's just getting them over here. That's what. Uh, something tells me it'd be interesting to own a Twenty Six Hundred library, just because no one has an entire Twenty Six Hundred library. Actually, I, you're right. If we're talking like truly like miraculous, no things. one has every Atari Twenty Six Hundred North American game. Yeah. Because there's a complete Atari collection, no. including everything that we don't know about. Because uh, games like Gamma Attack and Red Sea Crossing, there's a handful of copies or less. The Birthday Cart, if you want to count that, there's less than like a handful that exist. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird and of course the the fucking uh, Air Raid. Uh, there's like less than what 15 of them that exist, or there's not a lot of them. Um, so those are games that big collectors like Rich Weiss have almost all of them but even people like that don't have all of them so the, it's it'd be almost like a feather in your cap yeah i got every plus they're just fucking weird 
knowing that this game was like hand soldered in some guy's basement. Yeah. And he sold it in a magazine that like eight people saw and like four people ordered. It's just there's a weird part of gaming history that locks beyond to, to that uh, part of it. Like this is like in its most infantile form, home video games. Like right before it blew up, you know, you have people making them. This is the last time people were making them and releasing them like that. Like no one's making Switch games in their basement and releasing them. You know, like no. it's, it's not one man operations anymore. I mean, you have independent games that get released physically, but it's different than how that was. It was it was literally a one man operation. It, was, it appeals to me. Uh, the Atari 2600, and to that extent, I'd probably get Mike Mateo would probably be jealous if I did that. So he's a big 2600 guy uh, when it comes to that. Uh, yeah, I think those are the, the two for me. Those are the two fers uh, that would would appeal to me the most. Um, but I, I, that Master System thing, I think I'm basically winding down on my collecting career. I might go out and get some of those weird ass Master System games just because it could be fun to have them. Yeah, might as well. And a lot of them, I said, a lot of them aren't, aren't that much. Uh, to have, he's got to find like a buyer to ship him over uh, for you. All right, thanks for that uh, that Patreon poll question. Patreon.com. So I see you podcast.